the collision is a problem and in most of the physical events. So if we have two objects and collide, and we have the initial speed, and for example, the mass one, mass two has a velocity v1, v2 before the collision, before collision, and the total momentum, I'm use a capital J to represent, that will be uh, M V M1 V1 plus M2 V2. And after the collision, these two bar or objects separate or they speak together, doesn't matter, um, they have a new speed. So after the collision, the total momentum use J prime represents the, uh, the momentum. So the total momentum of the collision will be m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime. All the velocity in these equations uh, are vectors. So we need to define the positive direction and figure out the positive sign and negative sign. But no matter how you define the direction and how you pick up the reference frame, we will have the total momentum before the collision equal to the total momentum after the collision. This is a case when the collision uh, happened in the translation. So what if the collision happened in the rotation? For example, I have a disc. And there's a plate disc and it's spinning about the axis with an initial angular velocity as omega. And at some time, at this instance, I draw up an object uh, to the disk. And when this object lands on the disk, the disk is going to accelerate this object. And after the acceleration, and the object will obtain some angular velocity and the angular velocity of the disk decrease. So I have a, a new angular velocity. And then I have a question. What's the relation between the angular velocity before this object lands on the disk and after uh, the object lands on the disk. So what's the relation between the omega and the omega prime? Are the equivalent larger or smaller? So this is a question we are looking for answer. And to answer the question, we need to uh, find a new parameter and we need to know if there is anything conserved during this collision. Okay, so Let's talking about the torque. The torque we know equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. It's a general uh, equations. And if you know the moment of inertia and the angular acceleration, you can calculate the torque. And we know the angular acceleration is defined as the change of angular velocity over a duration, right? Delta omega over delta time. And then I can just move the delta t on the left side. I have a torque times the duration equal to the i moment of inertia times the change of angular speed. The angular speed change actually we know is something um, that we need to figure out. And in this case, we find that if there's no torque, if torque equal to zero, then we have change of angular momentum. Conserved. That's a constant. Oh, that's zero. That's zero. 
So that means I times omega equal to I times omega prime. So we have inertia times angular velocity before the collision, this is before the collision, equal to the ang moment of inertia times angular velocity after the collision. Okay, that means this product are very important because they are conserved before and after the collision. So we define the product of the inertia and the angular velocity as a new parameter that help us to figure out um, the angular velocity after and before the collision. So we give this product a name, angular momentum. Angular momentum. We use capital L to represent. This is equal to the moment of inertia times angular velocity. We call this angular momentum. And the angular momentum has a unit. Let's pick out the unit. The moment of inertia is kilogram meter square. And the angular velocity is per second. So this is a unit of the angular momentum. And you can compare with the momentum. They are similar. Uh, momentum is defined as mass times the velocity. And the angular momentum is equal to inertia times angular velocity. So let me give you an example and help you understand why do we need angular momentum. Here, we have an object, a mass point, and the speed is in the horizontal direction and the magnitude is 12 meter per second. Um, this angle is 36.9 degree and the center is O at position O, there's a point O and distance from the point P to point O is eight meter. And we uh, calculate the magnitude and the direction of its angular momentum relative to the point O. Let's figure out uh, the magnitude of angular momentum first. We know the angular momentum equal to the moment of inertia times, uh, times angular velocity. For the point of the mass, the moment of inertia is m r squared. This is for the point of mass, mass point. This is the moment of inertia. Then times uh, angular velocity. Here, the object is moving horizontal. This is a translation. This is not a rotation. So if this is not a rotation, how can we have an angular velocity in this case? We said the angular momentum relative to point O. That means if there is a rotation and we treat O as axis and the speed is in the horizontal direction and suppose this is a rotation, we're looking for the angular momentum. So we have to treat this translation into a rotation. So how can we do that? Suppose O is axis and there is a spinning motion. The radius is eight meter. And if there's a spinning, the tangential speed should be perpendicular to the radius. So the trajectory of the spinning will be like this. Okay, so this is a tangential speed. Tangential speed. I use V parallel to represent tangential speed. And the set at some position, <clears throat> this point has a horizontal speed that's 12 meter per second. So this is 12 meter per second. 
since the trimeter per second is not parallel to the radius or perpendicular to the radius, we have to separate and the trial meter per second into the radial direction and the tangential direction. Let me make it larger. This is 12 meter per second. We need to figure out the tangential component and the vertical or we call it the radial component. This is tangential, this is the radial. So when we have the tangential uh, velocity, then we will get the angular speed because angular speed is equal to tangential speed divided by the radius. This is very important to get a tangential uh, velocity. So the tangential velocity, let's figure out the component. And this is 36.9 degree. And the velocity is 12. So the tangential velocity equal to 12 times sine 36.9 degree. That's a tangential velocity. Okay. Then the omega angular velocity will equal to 12 sine 36.9 degree over radius is eight meter. Okay, let's do the calculation. We have 12 over eight time 36.9 sine. So eventually I get 0.9 per second. Okay, so let's go back to the angular momentum. We have mass here, two kilogram, radius is eight square times 0.9. So the angular momentum will be times 0.9, And the unit will be kilogram meter square per second. Okay, that's the magnitude of the angular momentum at this position. And do you have any question? All right, so let's figure out the, uh, the direction. The direction, um, there are two options here. How do we define the direction? If there's a spinning, There are two kinds of spinning, clockwise and counterclockwise. Okay. Okay. So the direction of the angular momentum is parallel to the axis. Axis is here. Axis has two options. One is coming out of the page and coming to the into the page. So there are two directions. Which one is the direction of the angular momentum? We use right hand row. Right hand row. It says if um, I just curl my four fingers and in the direction of the rotation, then the direction of the thumb is the direction of the angular momentum. Okay. So curl, four fingers, fingers um, along with the rotation. Here is the right hand, so we don't use the left hand. So along with the rotation, then the direction, the point direction of the sun is the direction 
of the angular momentum. So let's use right hand. So for the clockwise, I curl my four fingers clockwise and my thumb goes into the page. So the direction of the angular momentum for the first case goes into the page. I use a cross and to represent the direction pointing into the page. And the, the second case, I curl my four fingers uh, counterclockwise, my thumb goes out of the page, points out of the page. So I use a dot to represent the direction. So uh, you just need to remember for the clockwise, the direction goes into the page. For the counterclockwise, it goes out of the page. Let's see. In this problem, we have the velocity uh, goes left up, uh, right up. So this is a clockwise direction, a clockwise spinning. If this is a clockwise spinning, we use the first case, the direction of the angular momentum goes into the page. This is the direction of the angular momentum pointing into the page. Okay, do you have any question? If not, let me go to the part B. We're looking for if the only force acting on the rock is the weight, what's the rate change of the angular momentum? Rate change of angular momentum, what's that? Let me go back to the Newton's second law, this one. Uh, here. Torque equal to the I times alpha. Alpha equal to the change of the angular velocity over time. So we have this one torque, angular moment, angular, uh, this is inertia times angular velocity change over time. And we know in this case, the moment of inertia doesn't change. So I can put this guy inside of the difference. So I have differentiate of I omega times uh, over the small period or the small duration. And you can find that on the numerator, I times omega is angular momentum. So I have change of angular momentum over change time. So this is the rate of change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of angular momentum. Okay, angular momentum. The rate of change of angular momentum is the torque. This question asks for a torque. Ask for a torque. So what's the torque of this guy? And the only force on the object is gravi gravity. And the radius of this object from the point P to point O is eight meter. And the angle in between is 90 degree minus 36.9 degree. So we are going to use the formula torque equal to weight times radius times sine 90 degree minus 36.9 degree. Because we know the torque equal to force times radius times sine angle. The angle is uh, between the force and the radius. Weight goes down, radius goes in this way. So this is theta. In this case, we can calculate the torque as check the solution. Um, 125 Newton meter. Right, that's a torque. Then I have one thing uh, to emphasize because if the torque is zero, yeah, 
if the torque is zero, then the angular momentum conserve. So if I have torque equal to zero, I have angular momentum before the collision equal to the angular momentum after the collision. This is a total angular momentum. So I'm going to use, if I have two or three objects, I have to rewrite this equation as the total angular momentum of each element in the collision equal to the total angular momentum after the collision. You apply rapid. This is called conservation of angular momentum. We're going to use this equation in the collision and when the collision occurred in the rotation. And I will show you an example um, here is the example. Uh, there's a star collapsed into a very dense object. And this is happened um, sometimes in the universe when we have uh, uh, a star made by other objects. And then when it collapses, it becomes a neutron. We call this a neutron star. That star is made by uh, millions, billions of the neutron. And uh, the neutron star is very dense. You can think about this is very heavy. The density is very heavy. It's 10 to the 14 times as great as original uh, solid matter. Suppose and uh, the star is uniform, solid, and rigid sphere. This is a description tell you which moment of inertia should we look for in the table because we need to figure out the moment of inertia and the moment of inertia uh, is that uh, could be found into the table and we're looking for the moment of inertia of a uh, uh, solid sphere before uh, both before and after the collapse they are a sphere so the star initial radius is this one and we're looking for uh, the final angular speed. Okay. So we know the initial radius and the final radius. We know the initial period, 30 days, and we're looking for the angular speed after the collapse. Okay. If I draw a diagram, initial is a big brother. Then after collapse, Uh, it become a baby brother. And what will change in this process? The moment of inertia change. So the angular velocity will change because into this collapse, there's no external torque. Torque equal to zero. So we have conservation of angular moment, momentum, right? Angular momentum. So let's figure out the initial uh, angular momentum. Before the collapse, uh, the moment of inertia of a solid sphere is two over five mass times the radius square. This is uh, uh, moment of inertia inertia of a solid sphere. You can look for this formula from the table. And I will tell you this number in the exam. You don't need to memorize. What do you need to memorize for the uh, moment of inertia is a mass point moment of inertia. You should know for a mass point, mass point, the moment of inertia is equal to mv mr square. This is what you need to know. 
So let's go back to the sphere. We have 2 over 5 mass r squared. r is a radius. Caps times the initial angular velocity times uh, after the collapse, uh, it's also a sphere. So the formula of the inertia is the same. What will change is the radius. The radius becomes smaller. I use little r to represent r squared and omega prime. And you can find that um, during the collapse, the mass conserves. So I have two over five times mass cancel. I have radius square times omega equal to the radius square times omega prime. Okay. So here we know before the collapse, the original star rotates once in 30 days. That's a period equal to 30 days we need to change into the second. 30 days, one day is 24 hours, one hour is 3600 seconds. So that's a period in second. And we know the angular velocity equal to two pi divided by period. So this is the uh, angular speed before the collapse. So after the collapse, the angular velocity is equal to capital R square, initial angular velocity over the radius square after the class. So we know the ratio of the radius square, we use seven times 10 to the five kilogram over 16 kilogram, that's the ratio, and then times this value. Then we will get the uh, angular speed after the collapse, that is 4.6 times 10 to the third per second. That's the angular speed after it collapses. Do you have any question? Okay. If no question, I'm moving on. Um, I'm going to move to a next question. It said, uh, okay, this one. Uh, a large wooden uh, turntable in a shape of flat uniform disc. disc. Radius is two meter and total mass is one. So we can get the moment of inertia for this disc. The turning table is initially rotating at three uh, per second about the vertical axis to its center. Suddenly, okay, a parachutist um, just make a soft landing on the turning table at the point near the outer edge. There is a soft landing okay, on the edge of the turntable. So this person just make a soft landing. That means this friction. Okay, find the angular speeds of the turntable after the parachutist lands. Mm, assume that you can treat the parachutist as a particle. So we treat this as a mass point. Okay, let's figure out. Um, this is a problem of a collision in the rotation because this guy has a spinning speed. Okay. So before this guy lands on the turntable, the angular momentum is L. After this guy make a soft lens, the moment of the angular momentum is a total. That will be the angular momentum of the guy, parachutist, plus 
and the angular momentum of the turntable. We have angular momentum conserved. It's before the landing. It's after the landing. Okay, before the landing, let's figure out the moment of inertia. And the angular momentum equal to moment of inertia times angular velocity. And this is equal to the moment of inertia, uh, the angular momentum after the parachute is landing on the turntable plus the moment of inertia, uh, hold on, the angular momentum of turntable. Let's figure out the uh, angular momentum of the parachute. We treat this as a mass point. So for the mass point, the moment of inertia is m r square, right? n times the angular velocity. After we make a soft layer, so I use prime to represent. And for the turntable, it has the same moment of inertia, but a new angular velocity. And because there's a soft landing, the person and the turntable should have the same angular velocity. Okay, so we have the formula I omega before the landing equal to m r square omega prime plus I omega phi, this is after landing, angular moment after landing. So I is equal to the moment of inertia for a spinning disc. The spinning disc, one half mass R squared. Okay, so this times omega initial is three. So mass of the person 70 times r square r the radius of the of turntable two meter two meter square and omega prime is what we're looking for so we plus the moment of inertia one half mass r square times omega prime okay mass of the turntable 120 Right. And the radius is two meter. So we can solve the angular velocity after this person lands on the turntable is 1.38 per second. So you can uh, summarize this steps step-by-step um, -step procedure is the first guy we need to figure out angular momentum conserved so we have angular momentum before the collision equal to the angular momentum after the collision in this case the collision is landing then we replace the angular momentum by using the moment of inertia times angular velocity for the disk the angular momentum equal to the i times omega for the mass point, the angular momentum equal to m r square times omega. Then we plug into the number. We have uh, the parameter that I know. We can solve the parameter we don't know. Part B, compute the kinetic energy of the system before and after the parachutist lands. Why are the kinetic energy not equal? So after you calculate the kinetic energy, we know the kinetic energy equal to one half omega uh, inertia times angular velocity squared. This is before the landing. After the landing, we have one half i omega square prime square. This is for the turntable. And the kinetic energy of the parachutist, that is one half mass point and V square. 
And you can find that after you do the calculation, after the landing, the energy decrease. We have the initial kinetic energy larger than the uh, final kinetic energy. So why the energies are different? Think about that. When this person make a soft landing, the turntable is going to uh, accelerate the person. And the, uh, the person is also going to deaccelerate the turntable. The force between the parachutes and the disc is a friction. That's the only force. The friction has done negative work. So we have the energy decrease. So because soft landing is, is a sort of work done by friction. If the friction has done work, the work is usually negative work. So we have kinetic energy decrease. Do you have any question? <clears throat> okay, uh, I have 10 more minutes. I'm going to move a uh, new topic okay. here. Uh, this is a problem. Uh, we have two processes. First one is collision. Second one is uh, falling. And we need two equations to figure out the angular velocity. So let's see, there's a bird. The bird strike on the bar. And after the striking, the bird falls down vertically and the bar gain a velocity. After this bar gain a velocity, it spins and hits the ground. When it reaches the ground, uh, we need to know the velocity of the bar. Okay, this is a description. What we know is the mass of the bird, initial velocity of the bird, and where the bird strikes the bar, and how long the bar is, and how, how heavy the bar is, and what else? Okay, that's all. And we are looking for the velocity after the bird hits the bar. Okay. This is a collision problem. So we have angular momentum conserved. The angular momentum conserved, we have before the collision, the angular momentum, the bird here, the bird hits this one. The bird is the mass point. So the angular momentum is equal to m r squared times v. We treat the bird as a mass point. So this is the momentum inertia times, the velo uh, times angular velocity, sorry, angular velocity. And after the collision, um, the bar has angular momentum. That will be a moment of inertia of the bar times angular velocity. The bird, how about the bird? The bird has velocity, it says, the bird drops down. It just drops to the ground afterward. So that means um, the velocity of the bird after the collision is uh, vertically. So suppose the bird here, this is a bar. After the heat, the bar drops in this way, that's the velocity. To calculate the angular momentum of the bird after the collision, we need to figure out uh, the tangential velocity of the bird. Because 
the radius from here to here. That's the radius. Mm -hmm. uh, the angular momentum, we need to know the velocity. The velocity should be in the horizontal direction. because the uh, uh, horizontal direction is the tangential velocity. The, vert, the angular velocity equal to tangential velocity over the radius. If the tangential velocity is zero, then the angular velocity of the bird is zero. Then we have the angular momentum is zero. So because tangential velocity of the bird is zero, it drops down, so the velocity is vertically. There's no horizontal velocity. That means the angular momentum of the bird after the collision is zero. So that's zero. So we have mm, this is angular momentum of the bar. So we have m big square omega of the bird equal to i omega of the bar. Okay, so let's figure out the angular um, velocity of the bird before the strike the bar is equal to velocity of the bird divided by the radius. So we have m r squared times v over r to i times omega of the bar. And the square and the r cancel. So we have m v r times equal to i times omega bar. Okay. In this case, you will find that uh, mass 0.5 kilogram, velocity 225 radius, from here to here. Uh, the bar is 0.17 meter long and from the edge to the striking position 25 centimeters. So the radius 0.5 meter. How about the inertia of the bar? The inertia of bar from the table we know is one third mass times the length square. The length is the point and the mass is uh, mass. How about the mass? The mass here is 1.15 kilogram. So all the parameters is now we can solve the angular velocity of the bar up to the collision. So on the calculation, we have omega equal to two per second. Okay, that is part B. What's the angular velocity? And when the bar reach to the end, uh, reaches the ground. So we know this bar falls down. Is a heat. So during this motion, energy conserved. We know energy is from uh, the potential energy. Potential energy, potential energy equal to the change of kinetic energy. Kinetic change of kinetic energy. The change of kinetic energy equal to the final kinetic energy, one half I omega square. This is the final kinetic energy we're looking for, I use prime, minus the initial kinetic energy. Initial kinetic energy we know, we know I of the bar is one third mass L, and the omega here is Initial angular velocity is two. Initial is two. Okay, so we are looking for the omega 
after the collision. Uh, to get uh, the omega after the collision, we need to figure out the energy of the from the gravity. The potential energy is from the gravity. Um, the gravity give us uh, the mass times the g times the displacement l times l. But we want to know how long is l. If we, we trace the top point, and the top point move to the end, move to the ground, the displacement is the length of the l, is the length of the bar. The displacement is l. But if we trace the center of the bar, the vertical displacement is a half bar, half of the l. And if we trace the end point, then you will find that the displacement in the vertical direction is zero. So different position has different displacement. We have to do the average. So when we do the average, you will know when the bar falls down, the average displacement in the vertical direction is equal to L over two. It's half of the displacement. And this is easy to understand. I give you a, right? Because if the bar falls down at different position, suppose this is a function of the other position I use Z. I uh, use Y, use Y to represent position. And the X axis is uh, displacement, displacement. Okay, at the very high position, the displacement is very high. So at the top point, the displacement is L, displacement is L. This is L. And at the zero position, the displacement is zero. So here is zero. So different position has different displacement and it's a linear line. Y displacement is a linear line. So if we do the average of this line, the average is a middle point. So the average displacement of the bar is one half of the length of the bar. That's why I use L over two to represent the displacement. So the potential energy, the potential I write it wrong, Potential energy is equal to the mass times the G times half L. Then in this case, we can solve the omega prime. This is the angular velocity after the collision. That is 6.58 per second. Okay, so this is what I'm, look, uh, I'm going to talk today. Um, we talk about collision and we talk about angular momentum conservation. And do you have any other question? Okay, if you don't have other question, uh, uh, I will see you on Thursday. On Thursday, I'm going to give you uh, another quiz that will be at the end of class. So please come and show up and take 10 minutes at the end of class for the quiz. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Have a good day.